For some reason, the screen is flashing. I don't know why. Oh, is it okay? Let me fix that. Doesn't actually seem to be showing anything. Uh... Yeah, I'm seeing the uh, 3D printing antenna. Oh, are you? Okay, good. It's the BRC website, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, it is uh, six o'clock. We can uh, get started here. Welcome to the Elmer session. Uh, it runs from uh, 6 to 6.45. Um, this is just a general Q&A. If you have any uh, questions uh, for, for ham radio, um, Elmers, uh, please uh, please ask. Um, everyone is welcome. This is not a net. There won't be any check-ins, and you don't need to be a ham radio operator uh, to join in. So if you have any projects or anything you'd like uh, to bring forward, uh, please let us know. And please mute your uh, mic if you're not speaking. Yeah, let's go over that too, because I did that by accident the last time. Let's see. Maybe if I can, if you go to your, the three dots, let's see if I can share my screen. It wasn't looking like it was working before. Let's check that again here. Hopefully you'll start to see the, uh, you see the meeting here? I'm seeing presenting to everyone. Okay, yeah. Uh, down here at the three dots, if you see that, you'll select that and then select settings. And just make sure you have uh, your correct microphone selected if you wanted and the correct speakers as well so you can hear. And then uh, if you want to mute, just uh, mute the, hit the mute button here. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, Ham Radio Outlet did mention that they're actually hiring a position uh, here in Denver. Let me uh, share the screen back out here. Actually, it's more than one. Oh, is position. it? Okay, good. Good, good. One's one's full time, but they're also looking for part time people. I got a great story about Dean Hayworth. I don't know if you all remember Dean back in the day, I think it was AC0S. I had a part-time gig at HRO and I walked in there one time and he said, Jeff, how are you today? I said, well, I'm just looking around and see what I need. He says, you don't need any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of not needing things, I got, <clears throat> I was um, watching one of the um, packet uh, groups on the groups IO and um, MF, MFJ, well, the TNC Pi went out of business and MFJ took it over and they just announced that they're going to now, now sell the TNC Pi again. And, uh, it's on their website. Um, I don't know if, um, yeah, that's it. That link there. I don't know if, um, HRO, if they're going to carry it or not, I'm going to find out on Saturday when I'm, I'm I work on Saturday, so I'll find out. But uh, the TNC Pi is great. I've got a couple of them, and they work work really well. I was surprised how well they work. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at MFJ site at seventy nine ninety five. Yeah, it's not cheap. It also does, if I remember right, it'll do HF as well as VHF. Cool.
Okay, yeah. That's a pretty good looking product there. Yeah, I have uh, just a regular signal link, but I don't have too much on the just pure data side serial like that. You could also stack them. So you could have like a, you can bridge them and you could have like an HF to VHF gateway and vice versa. Hmm. Well, very cool. Yeah, thanks for bringing that here, uh, Larry. The uh, the TNCP uh, Pi now being sold by MFJ here. Pretty neat. All right, anyone else on that or anything else you'd like to bring up so far? Just let us know. Somebody's there. Let's see who that is. Is that Cedric? Or Fred? If you're talking, if somebody's talking, we definitely can't hear it. Your audio is definitely distorted. Okay, looks like that was Cedric, WA2FTV. Um, I'm sorry, is it just me that's hearing that uh, background noise? Maybe my audio's now dead. No, it looks to me like he's trying to say something, but we're not picking it up. Okay. Yeah, Cedric, I'm not sure what's going on with your audio. Maybe if you need to unplug the mic, plug it back in. I'm not too sure. Um, we're just definitely getting a lot of noise, not, not your voice, though. We might keep muting you until it, yeah. Okay. Well, Cedric's getting that squared away. Let's see what else we got here. Still hearing bad, bad audio for you, Cedric. Sorry. If you want to type something in the chat, though, we can certainly try that. We had this problem one other time, and it was Cortana that kept unmuting and coming on. Hmm. I don't know if it was Cedric or... Oh, there he is. He just controlled it himself. I hope he's back off. Cedric, you're just not making the trip. I don't know what the issue is, but we're going to have to meet you. Okay. Put your question in the chat, Cedric, if you'd like to ask a question. Looking at a um, photo of a e-ink screen. E-ink uh, e is... Um, organic material. Um, it's either on or off, I believe, and you can run it, I, I think, without power, almost. I mean, it's what's in um, our, um, like, a uh, Amazon uh, um, paper reader. Uh, but basically, this person has put in an e-ink uh, screen into a picture frame, and then using uh, RTLSDR, a software-defined radio, he's using that to pick up uh, NOAA images and uh, refresh the refresh the image on the screen. So pretty pretty neat little project here. I wonder if uh, he has any other info on here. Looks like he's just using kind of a standard um, setup for NOAA reception. Um, let's see. And again, uh, NOAA has uh, satellites broadcasting uh, images, and uh, you can you can pick them up here. So that's a pretty neat uh, project here. Let's 
checking the chat here. Still nothing yet. Anyone else? <laughs> I have plenty of things that we could go over this evening, but uh, if anybody has anything they'd like to bring forward, um, this is not a net. Um, this is an Elmer session. Um, please feel free to bring any questions for amateur radio, electronics, uh, any projects you're working on, show and tell. Uh, let us know. By phone, by uh, voice, or by text? Uh, either one. If voice sounds good, you're whoever you are, you're sounding just fine. So uh, feel free to go by voice. It's just fine. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Hudson, KE0FAN. And I uh, apologize I'm a little late, but uh, I had some questions on NFED half waves. All right. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So I have purchased a 71 foot NFED half wave from Palomar Engineering. It has a 9 to 1 anun. Um, I also have 100 feet of coax and one of the little toroid uh, pieces that you weave the coax through to act as a um, blocker to RF entering the shack. So that's the antenna. And the questions are surrounding antenna placement. So in my home, um, we live real close to neighbors, uh, like less than nine feet. <clears throat> and so I guess I was contemplating running the antenna around the profile of the house. Um, and I guess the first question is, is can the antenna back up against itself? So like if you were running down a, a portion of the roof, if you're looking plan view, it would look like a square wave, right? So do, can the antenna go you know, left, forward, and then right? Or does that fact that the antenna backs up against itself um, cause some sort of degradation in signal? That is a great question. I am not too uh, familiar with that, with that but uh, this, this was sounding super familiar because uh, this last learning that uh, somebody else had brought up very something similar, a uh, random wire and fed, uh, uh, they had four to one Unan and um, 223 feet. Um, I thought it was from Palomar Engineering as well, but... Um, uh, anyone else on the net or on the on the chat here have any any feedback on that question there about the N-wave uh, half wave uh, antennas? Repeat just that last part of the uh, the question there. Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> if you were looking at the profile of my house from a plan view, so bird's eye view, and and you were to imagine a square wave in a uh, oscilloscope. That's kind of what I'm asking is if you're coming down a run of roof and then there's a left turn and then a right turn and another right, turn, excuse me, uh, yeah, left turn, a right turn and a right turn and then another left turn so that you go around a piece of the house, does the fact that you've gone backwards against the antenna negate a portion of its apparent length? Gotcha. You know, I'm not too sure. Um, let's see if we had, uh, or Fred, uh, you have any input on that? Fred Hart, uh, AZRJK by chance? You know, I'm not too sure if uh, going back upon the, the cabling itself, if that would uh, be counterintuitive. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, that's a great question, though. Um, I'll throw it out once more. Uh, anyone else on on the group here have any any input on um, that end fed half wave antenna and, and going back upon itself uh, due to constraints you know drone this jerry uh, typically you, you want the feed line perpendicular to the antenna uh, are, you, are you talking about feeding it it's going to go around the house is that what you're saying yes. you're not talking about going right next to you know, yeah. doubling back right next to itself. Uh, correct. So the, <clears throat> the question isn't really about the feed line. The question is about the, just the antenna wire itself. Yeah. So if you, if you imagined a square wave on an oscilloscope and that were the profile of my roof, the question is, is when you go positive, right, and then more horizontal and then negative on that, you know, to make the, the three sides of the square, does, does the length virtually change, right? The apparent length to the signal. You know, I think a lot of it's going to depend on the distance it is apart and all that. 
probably this is one of those things where you're going to have to try it. Okay. Just try it and see if it. it works. You know. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's and, that, and I will honestly say that's part of my apprehension. I, I typically don't like to climb higher than I'm willing to fall. Um, and my roof's you know whatever thirty some feet up in the air. Yeah, I hear so, you there. So and the other part is I don't want to go you know horseshoe nailing this antenna into my fascia, uh, only to to have to take it down and then have you know painting and, and weathering issues damage. Are, are your downspouts? Uh, that's another consideration. You know if they're if they're uh, plastic like a lot of Mari, if if they're metal downspouts, you get too close to them, it's definitely gonna affect the antenna yeah all the all the the, the drainage is uh, aluminum um so that was that was part of a concern and uh you know it's just not an optimal location right now i'm running a compact antenna with some decent success um you know, like i'm able to get like 900 miles or so um which is i think pretty good given what it is but i'd obviously like to get a little further if i could um <clears throat> And then I guess the other question that I had that I think is probably appropriate would be um, if there's a preference to, to the height of the of the unun relative to the ground. You know, is it better to have the unun, you know, just a couple feet off the ground, or is it better if I put it in a tree to take the weight off of you know the antenna by lifting it as high as possible, putting it at the top of the tree, and then running the antenna onto the roof line from that. I know a lot of the end-fed wires, they run them, you know, just the, the balance close to the ground, so a few feet off the ground. There again, it's going to be one of those trial things, I think. Maybe Fred or somebody that's, I've never messed what much uh, with an end-fed, uh, but uh, maybe somebody else can offer something. This is Jeff. I uh, posted a link to an article uh, in the chat you might want to look at. It talks about folding, bindling, and, and mutilating dipole antennas and gives a little insight into what effect that might have. My concern with having an end in the tree and, and the other to the house would be lightning protection. I'd be concerned about transmitting lightning uh, to your roof. Um, okay, fair enough. Um, and do we think that, that the metal drip guard interfacing between the, the asphalt shingle and the fascia um, is also going to affect the the antenna, or is that going to be immune because it's not really connected to anything else? Any metal that's close to the antenna is going to affect it, guaranteed. And close is relative, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Any metal is going to be in the field is going to create an inductance loop and affect yeah, exactly. and your pattern or whatever. All right. Yeah, that's. I, I had originally bought a buddy pole, and and I get very inconsistent results. And I've determined that it's just because of where on my patio I end up setting it up and how high I end up running the mast. And so yes, it, it definitely seems very um, sensitive to all of that stuff. And I was hoping to find a way around uh, around the the, fi the, fi the finickiness of that antenna. Hey, you, you mentioned. Me. Go ahead, Jerry. You mentioned a tree. And the trees are always good options uh, for antennas. Yeah, so the, the tree is just a little Bradford pear. It's probably 20 feet up. Um, it's about as high as I can go, and it's the only tree on my property. <laughs> so it's just it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a rear loaded alley, and every house gets a tree, right? So um, pretty much the only thing I can do is either fiddle with the tree, going to the house, or stick with everything just on the house and suffer the consequences of. You know, maybe go from. Uh, like uh, somewhere near the ground to the tree and then to the house with the end of it, something yeah, like that. Right. That's kind of where I was That's thinking. That's what I same. would think about. Okay. If you, you put it near metal, you're going to have issues. All right. And, and are you going to use a tuner with this and, and how are you going to ground it? I, so I, in fed, I assume you're going to ground it. Yeah. So the, so the, I'm just using the built-in tuner on the 991 is my, is my goal. Um, and in terms of grounding, um, I can, uh, I can run a 75 ohm coax, which is already run for cable TV to the exterior of my house. Um, so I can drop onto the ground rod from that. Uh, 
Well, this is why they call it antenna experimentation. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is Dave, WG0N, and uh, to the station asking the question, is this a, do you own this unit or is it a rental? I own it. Didn't know you could rent antennas. <laughs> okay. When you start experimenting, put your wire, hot wire up and give it a try. But you might also consider at one time or another attaching on to the aluminum uh, guttering. And uh, you, you can even put uh, plastic chunks in to, uh, to determine what you're doing with it. But uh, I've talked to some people, they just load up their gutter system around the house and manage to get thousands of miles. Okay. Eight right. zero JK. Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Ha. Ah. Trying to push buttons here, figuring out why I'm not getting through. Ah, uh, I must have finally pushed the right button. <laughs> uh, interesting question there on the antenna, and uh, uh, I don't uh, didn't quite uh, follow exactly uh, the uh, way that you had it routed, but uh, just just some comments. Uh, you can't have that folding back on itself. What is it 90 degrees you have to have at least about 90 degrees uh, to keep from having it uh, uh, the radiation patterns from coming in and canceling uh, uh, itself so you, you don't want it to come back over onto itself and as far as uh, uh, you said something i think uh, about stapling it to the to the house <laughs> no 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 uh, you want to, you want that away from any structures and uh, staples. Uh, uh, that's kind of where things are going to stop every first time one of those that you put in, and keep it away from the gutters. Now the gutters might make a good uh, uh, counterpoise, <laughs> but uh, I've heard the stories also about people uh, loading up their their gutters. But uh, you just never know what's going to radiate and what's not. But uh, uh, keep it away from any structures as far as possible and uh, uh, don't fold that uh, any of that uh, antenna back over on itself or else is you're going to be canceling uh, your your uh, RF out and from the sounds of it that you're as close as you are to your neighbor expect problems expect problems uh, I wouldn't recommend you uh, operating any hundred watts or anything more than that I think you're going to be restricted to QRP without, uh, and maybe even that, as close as it sounds, uh, you're, you're going to be getting into your neighbor's appliances. They're going to have their lights blinking on and off, and uh, uh, their toasters and blenders are going to be talking to them, <laughs> uh, tongue in cheek on that. And uh, uh, it's amazing some of the comments you get from them, but uh, you don't want any, any external antennas that they can see because they're going to know who's causing the interference. But any, I don't know whether that helps any or not. So if any further questions uh, to that, uh, let me know. AA0JK. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate the, uh, the input. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of other questions, but I think I've got the drift. Um, you know, I, I think it's just I'm, I'm, I'm not in a great spot for ham radio antennas. So I'm just going to have to press on with what I've got, I think, for the most part. And question. Question. Go ahead. Uh, what are you using for a counterpoise? I realize that 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 is an infed, but you still have to have a, a grounding side, an RF ground side to that. Uh, are are you? Do you have a, a, a? Did your radio? I mean, did your antenna come with a uh, counterpoise wire? Right. Yeah. So it, it comes with two. I think they're fifteen foot segments, and they want you to lay out one underneath the antenna and the other one. Uh, 180 degrees away. Um, and then it also says if you use them. And of course, the alternative is, is that you use an exceptionally long piece of coax and then put in this, uh, you know, toroidal um, transformer in the, in the coax line to, to block RF into the shack. So right now I haven't put the antenna up. So I can't tell you which one I'm using, but I have two options. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. So, uh... Uh, once you get the situation with uh, getting it routed uh, around there uh, to where uh, you can get it up off up off the <laughs> into the air a ways there, but uh, 
keep us posted because I'd like to hear yeah how that how that uh, works out there for you because sure. there's a lot of us out here that are in the same situation that you are and we just love to get some feedback so that we in turn can maybe get ourselves uh, situated with a uh, operational antenna system so I'm thankful for your your question because we're all learning from uh, this this uh, feedback that we're getting from everyone as they are uh, uh, trying to cope with getting RF out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm currently running a compact tenant and I'm, I'm remarkably happy with it. Uh, I just like to get a little further. Um, and so, uh, although it is certainly not a great antenna by any measure, uh, it seems to be doing pretty well in our HOA. Okay, good. Very good. Keep us posted. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Okay, uh, this is K1DBC Drone. Uh, up next, we have uh, Cedric. Uh, go ahead. Can you hear me? I'm on the phone. We can, absolutely. Sound just fine. Okay, great. I got a couple antenna questions. Well, one antenna question. I have a... Not, I live in an apartment on the second floor, and I have a balcony, and I was starting to uh, install radios or counter or yeah radios, and then on a whim I just extended the antenna all the way up to its full length. And I was able to resonate on 40 meters, which sort of surprised me. Is my cement uh, pad acting as a ground plane like it would be on a car? Because I hadn't run into this. Does that make sense what I just said? What kind of antenna is it? It's the MFJ 1979 17-foot collapsible uh, with, uh, antenna, and I got a Wolf River Coils uh, Silver Bullet 1000 underneath it to uh, adjust for different bands. Okay, that was an MFJ. Uh, uh, let's see, what did I get? Like 1979. What, what am I missing here? Yeah, and yeah, yes, and uh, I have a Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000 uh, adjustable coil underneath it and that's mounted on currently on a mag mount that's sitting on the cement pad of the of the balcony and it's it, i'm wondering if it's if that balcony floor is acting like a ground plane oh uh, yeah, had... yeah a mag a mag mount uh is is the mag mount just sitting on the bare concrete or do you have a uh some some metal underneath that mag mount. I just got a short piece of aluminum foil underneath the mag mount. Not very magnetic, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but but uh, I would think that that would have a little bit to do with it. Is there anything attached to that uh, uh, that aluminum? No, just the floor of the con just the concrete floor. Okay, interesting. Um, I'm not sure uh, if there's if there's some rebar in there. Anybody got an idea there with maybe if that rebar could be uh, affecting his setup? There could be rebar or or mesh in the in the concrete pad. Um, I'm, do you I'm, have it grounded anyway, Cedric? No, it's no. I don't have access to like a ground rod or anything. I'm up on the second floor in a car apartment complex. Uh, the some, only ground would be through the coax cable to the radio. You could have some coupling to that rebar or mesh in the pad. I don't know. You could also try grounding to the uh, railing. I assume you have a railing around your, your balcony there. Question. Go ahead. Uh, what are you using for a counterpoise? Nothing. Uh, I would highly recommend maybe getting uh, uh, a length of wire there uh, to uh, a minimum of a quarter quarter wavelength of uh, the bands that uh, you're going to be using 
and uh, run that uh, around uh, your apartment there, uh, somewhere where it's out of the way, and uh, use that as your, your RF ground. Okay. Do I need a separate one for each band? Uh, that's, that's usually recommended, but, uh, uh, if you, you know, if that's going to be a problem, uh, you would want to link to the, uh, uh, lowest, uh, uh, band that you plan on, uh, uh using, uh, the link okay. uh, there. Okay. I'll try that. Second question I have is. I'm getting a lot of noise on my radio, and I don't know what kind of noise it is. And I was just wondering if any of these noise canceller systems are any good. I've seen a couple online by some people down in Australia, you know, where they have a circuit you can uh, duplicate. Uh, any comments on that? I mean, we're talking 20 dB over nine on like 40 meters, and I can throw in the attenuator a little bit and it'll drop it down, but it's a lot of noise, and I don't know what kind of noise it is. Um, question. The radio's in the other room. Yeah, question. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, uh, have you gone around the house and turned uh, lights and... Uh, uh, your your other appliances in the house off one by one to see if it affects it um just the computer i haven't turned off the stove or any or the refrigerator or anything like that i do not have a tv by choice um so it's basically my computer stuff and uh lights and i got the uh compact fluorescent lights uh for lighting for the most part Okay, um, yeah. I can tr comment. Uh those those lights will uh cause interference. Uh also I know my computer uh I have to be careful where I set uh things around my computer cuz it also will generate noise. And let's see, there was one more. Oh, what kind of power supply are you running your radio with? Um this is a self-contained. It, it doesn't have a external power supplies. It's a Kenwood TS930 from the late 80s. So the power supply is inside the radio. It runs on 110 only. Excellent. It's not a 12 volt unit. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I'd, I'd be looking for maybe a, a light or maybe even the computer. Uh, that could be causing uh, uh, that interference there to to your radio, and uh, you also might want to uh, take into account uh, the uh, position of your antenna versus uh, uh, anything electrical uh, appliance-wise. Also, but uh, interesting question. Would like to hear any further comments that you have as you uh, progress there. So let us know. Yeah. Am I likely to be picking up stuff from other apartments? I'm trying to keep a low profile, so except for one neighbor, I don't think the yes. other people uh, know that I'm a ham radio operator. So Excellent. I don't know if I'm picking up stuff from from yes. them or not. Yes, yes, yes. If uh, if they're uh, growing, got got grow lights for their uh, their uh, their funny 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 pl plants that they smoke. Uh, if they, <laughs> uh, if, you know, the, yes, their appliances, their lighting, when you're in an apartment like that, uh, those walls are very thin. And so uh, grow lights or, or other appliances in their, their apartment can definitely uh, affect it. So you might have to move things around and see how things change, if they change, uh, to see on one side or the other, up or down. Uh, if might possibly that could be the case. Yes. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? Yeah, I, I do. Does anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I can. Hear. Well, at the location I have here, I don't have an apartment. Just have a house. 
And I, I used to get a little bit of noise. So I put a line isolator at the feed point of the antenna. I put a line isolator at the transmitter. And then I got some ferrite beads. And I put it on power supplies or anything coming into the radio. And that tremendously lowered the noise floor on the uh, FTDX 1200. When I connect an older radio, which is a Icon 718, it still shows a noise floor of six or seven, which means the front, to me, I'm only talking about me, the 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 end uh, that icon 718 which doesn't really have any filters in it uh it has so much front end noise but the 1200 didn't have front end noise plus i have different uh you know dsp in there but by putting a line isolator at the uh, antenna uh, feed point and then also at the uh, you know, where the transmitter is. And then on any, any power supplies, I bought uh, some clip-on 31s uh, and some 43s. And that really lowered stuff. Uh, my concern would be, because uh, when I'm in my house and I'm on 20 meters uh, for sure, if my wife's washing clothes, I can, even though it's not pegging the needle, uh, there's no S there at all. I can still hear the washing machine on certain frequencies. Uh, my concern would be is he, he is, you know, all the, all the antennas in that apartment, which are just picking up every type of radiations being pumped into his radio. And I would say a line either line item, uh, a line, you know, inline, I put those in there with counterpoise, but that's all I have to say. Uh, you got, I mean, that's an awful lot of antennas. I mean, think about my, I'm in a house here. My, my wife's washing clothes downstairs, but it's picking up the, the swoosh, swoosh, swoosh that's being radiated from that motor into my wiring system, my house still coming into my radio. Anyway, this is Don KD0ZU and I'll shut up now. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Don, when you say line isolator, are you referring to a common mode filter, common mode noise filter, or something else? Yeah. I have yeah. one at each yeah. end. I have one at the radio, and I have one at an interface uh, of the window that goes out into the pad, into the uh, balcony, but it's not right at the antenna. I can move that and try that. Yeah, well... Um According, it's the MFJ, uh, I think it's 1915 or something like that. I got two of them. They have it right at, I have it right at the antenna feed line. And underneath those, I have some 31 clip-ons. I went crazy with this because I was getting too much noise. And then in the house, right pretty close, within three feet, I have another line, uh, line isolator there. But I clipped, um, I clipped on stuff. And just to give you, for instance, I do CB radio here at the house, and I get a horrible amount of hash and noise. I can get an S9 on there. Once I clip uh, tor- uh, ferrites on that uh, the, the, the coax, it drops to S, uh, S2. <laughs> and it's just, uh, this is how it is. And if you're in an apartment complex, I can imagine it's picking up everything in there, and, and you want to shut it down. Anyway, that's my opinion, which means nothing. Okay. What was the number of the toroid of the toroid core? What number um, was uh, the that? ferrite? Yeah, the ferrite uh, bead is a uh, well. The dimension is it's a thirty-one, obviously. It, okay. It's a, like a one forty thirty-one, and then there's a one. A two forty, uh, forty three, forty three. You know, as you know, the the different material in the beads cover different frequencies. So I went forty three, yeah. and and, and thirty one. But the thing that really hammered it for me was, you know, 
also the uh, the line isolators. With that said, I'm saying I still pick here my wife downstairs with the washing machine on 20 meters on certain frequencies. Uh, every one of those antennas in that apartment building is one massive uh, antenna that's feeding that. And and back to what I did say about the Icon 718, it just had a noisy front end. Once I switched over to the 891 or the the 1200, uh, it just had a better filter system. But I'm pretty sure other people that are listening to me know more about this and can talk about that. Anyway, this is Don KD0 CDU. Uh, go ahead. Comment. All right. Thanks there, Don ZDU. Yeah. Uh, Fred, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't quite catch exactly where they're putting the uh, ferrites, but uh, might take into consideration putting uh, some of those ferrites uh, on the power cord uh, coming into your radio as close to the radio as uh, possible because uh, the power line uh, uh, feeding your radio can also act as an antenna and, and pick up uh, uh, some of that noise. So just just a thought there. Back to net control. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, hopefully, uh, Cedric, that... Uh kind of answered your question there. I don't know if you have any other follow-up on that. No, uh, it gives me a couple things to do, so I'm going to uh, check. I got some uh, ferrite cores already. I want to see which uh, size that is and uh, get the others. You mentioned 31 and 43. I got to check to see what I got. Thank you. Back to you, Doran. I've got a quick comment, too. Perfect. Yeah, sounds good, Cedric. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Larry. Um, also, I was going to ask about your feed line, what type of coaxial cable you're using to the antenna. Um, if you use a heavy-duty military-grade um, feed line, it's uh, double um, shielded, and that would also help not picking up any noise from any, um, any other... But, um, of your neighbors or your own uh, electronic equipment, I would still put some ferrite chokes on the cable at various points. And and Fred's right about putting it on the um, the power cord as well. But I think if you have some really good um, coaxial cable, you'll find that that'll cut down on some of the noise. Larry, question. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you talking uh, military grade? Uh, if you happen to stumble across an ID number on uh, that type of cable, uh, could you pass it along to us sometime in the future, please? Yeah, I'll I'll look here real quick and I'll pop pop back in. Thank you. Yeah, right now I have um, RG8X. Sounds good. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, no problem, Cedric. Yeah, uh, go ahead with a comment in there. Go ahead. Yeah. Is he is he talking about that LMR four hundred, which is double shielded, or is he talking about the two thirteen? I just as is a. Um, the eight X is is flexible, but it's not double shielded. Um, the twenty two thirteen from ABR Industries is a uh, mil spec grade, and it's double shielded. I would recommend that. Thanks, Larry. Okay, thank you for the info. All right, sounds good. Anyone else on this? Uh, uh, or go ahead, Larry. On the 2213, it's not very expensive. It's just not very flexible like an 8X. 8X is very flexible. The 2213 is not as flexible, but it's not expensive. It's uh, actually f fairly well-priced. And ham radio outlet carries that, I'm, I'm assuming? Yes. Yeah, they have it in all kinds okay. of various lengths. Yeah, already with uh, connectors on it, etc. Okay, thank you. All right, twenty two thirteen. Yeah, ABR Industries here. Okay, perfect. Okay, we have a little bit longer here. Um, the regular meeting does start in about uh, 17 minutes, but um, we definitely have a little bit of time left here. Um, 
I guess real quick, uh, if I know it's a little late into the meeting now to be to be going over this, but uh, if you haven't uh, looked on the the meeting, uh, you can go to the three dots and change layout to spotlight, and then you can see uh, some of the things I've been showing as as well as uh, some other things. That being said, though, anyone else have anything else uh, they'd like to bring up? Otherwise, I can I can pass a few more things here. I've got a quick question. Sure. This is Bill KE zero YKV. Uh, when I put an antenna tripod up on my roof, uh, I've seen some people say that you should attract, attach three ground wires, one to each leg, and run them down to your grounding point for lightning protection. But is there any reason why those three wires can't be? Uh, <clears throat> Well, do I really need three wires? And if I do, can I just put them together and run one single heavy cable to the ground? Don't see why not. I mean, it would just save me buying copper. <laughs> uh, understood. I've only got one running down from mine. <laughs> And I haven't had any problems. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I just need to find a couple of uh, brave, bold, daring people to help me get up on the roof and do it. <laughs> so, but thanks for the, answering the question. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's safe and it and it stays in place, I I would imagine that should be okay. But uh, yeah, safety mm -hmm. first, absolutely. All right. Anyone on that? Does anyone have any other comments on uh, uh, <laughs> having the roof antenna tripod and, and uh, guy wiring? I just put a link in the chat that gives a comparison of uh, braided versus solid versus strap uh, copper for grounding. Might be interesting to take a look at. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah, I misunderstood that. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. All right, anyone else uh, have anything so far you want to bring up? Please let us know. Let's see here, a couple of things. Question, Jerome? Yeah, go ahead with the question. It's Jim B O K zero T O R. Uh I can't seem to get in on the video channel. Is there a particular problem right now or? not that I was aware of. Uh you're trying to go to the uh the meet.google link on the uh the W zero T X webpage and it uh Yeah, I try to sign in four times and it comes up and says you can't join this video call. <laughs> gotcha. Is it um so are you signed in then with your Google account, or is your Google account not signed in? Uh, I just click the sign-in address. Sure. It says uh, that I'm on meetgoogle.com. What browser are you using, uh, Jim? I'm sorry? What browser are you using? Uh, Firefox. I just put the link in the chat. Make sure you get the right link there. Oh, you can't see it, can you? <laughs> that doesn't really good. I'll go back. I'll go back and try to sign in again, yeah. Steve. I'll email it to you too. Okay. Yeah. As far as I know, it it uh, should be working. We got about twenty five people joined here. Um, I know some people were having some audio issues earlier, but uh, I think everyone is able to to view at least the the video portion of it. All right. I'll wait till I get Jeff's email and I'll try it on that. I'll stay Sorry. on the phone here in, in the meantime. Jim. Yeah. Jerry Meltzer, W0FFC. I had the same problem. I dropped out. I basically went back and then logged on a second time, and then it asked me to join. So the first time I got, you can't join the meeting. So maybe drop out, you know, and then uh, go back to Firefox or Google. I'm actually on Brave. And then uh, try it one more time. And then I got a thing where it said I could join. So okay. try it. Again. I'll give that a try too. Okay. Thanks. I just sent you that email, Jim.
Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you have any ever have any technical issues, definitely uh, don't hesitate. Uh, as it shows in there, there's a phone number you can call in, um, and uh, we can try to help you out further there. Uh, quickly here, over on uh, arl.org forward slash news, um, there's an interesting post on uh, British Columbia Radio Amateur Radio's uh, here's a Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Uh, we had uh, spoken about this on the Wednesday Night Learning Net, but uh, Scott Tilly, uh, he's, he's been brought up before, and he's a citizen scientist and has found um, the image um, IMAGE uh, NASA um, spacecraft uh, that they thought was, uh, was dead, um, but now he's, uh, he's, about, uh, he's getting some receiving signals from the NASA Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, flying just around 274 kilometers above uh, the Mars surface, so... Uh, pretty neat uh, what you can do uh, nowadays. Uh, so more info on uh, ARRL.org forward slash news on that. Over on uh, Hackaday.com, always a favorite blog of mine, just to, uh, to browse a lot of uh, interesting um, engineering articles, electronic, uh, mechanical, um, medical, um, mechanical, all, all types of engineering. Uh, so uh, lots of uh, lots of different projects going on there, and uh, some pretty interesting um, engineering going on. Doran, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, this is going to be very basic, but I don't know the answer. Um, I'm about to put a vertical up in my yard, and so the question comes, how do I run the coax from my ham shack to the vertical? Do I just lay it on the ground? Do I bury it? What do you do? I have a if comment. it were me and I was ambitious, I'd put in a piece of conduit and run it through a piece of conduit, but not knowing your situation. Well, you know, so basically dig a, dig a little trench and put it through just some conduit and then yeah, run it under the ground. It's easy to pull it in, pull it out, and make sure you seal it in so you don't get water and ice in there and stuff. Okay. Just wondered. Yeah, just make sure the critters can't get to it. Elevate it to where the uh, uh, wildlife can't get to it, <laughs> squirrels and what have you. I, I've had bear... Uh, well, coax running on the ground from my antennas for years, and I've never had a problem with squirrels or rabbits or anything. Of course, I had a we had a meeting about it, and we negotiated that they wouldn't do anything, <laughs> and, and I wouldn't uh, kick them out of the yard. So, but uh, I haven't had any problems with mine. Um, and again, I I emphasize quality coax that can stand UV radiation. Um, certainly. Putting it into a co uh, into a plastic pipe and uh, running it that way, I won't I won't disagree. That's the best way to go. But you can put your bare cable on the ground and it'll be all right. And and you're not using RG8. You're using something else. Yeah, I'm using 2213 or the LMR 400. So I'm okay. using full size. The only time I use RG8X is when I'm doing some uh, curvatures around that I have to get through, but outside I use the thicker stuff. Okay. If, if you do bury it, make sure that it's, that it's uh, rated for that or in a few years it'll deteriorate. Yeah. Most of the good stuff is going to be bur variable. Yeah. Right. Uh, along the same topic, I was looking at, uh, what is it? Uh, RF precise, as an interesting uh, uh, magnetic loop. And they said that they only recommend running 50 feet total between the ham shack and the antenna. And I wonder why just 50 feet? Is there, a, you know, what happens when, for example, so the vertical I'll be putting up is about, I don't know, 70 feet from, the, from where my shack is. So, do the do the runs make a difference? And there's basically if it's an infant vertical or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. Does it make a difference for how long the run is from the shack to wherever it is you're going? And why? 
It depends on the loss figure for your cable. If it's low loss RG8 type cable, you can run it longer. Other cables, you may have to run shorter. So it's not an it's not an issue with SWR or standing waves on the on the on the coax running out to the antenna. You know, you might want to ask Precision about that because there could be some reason there's interaction uh, because the loop's kind of a different animal, and there may be some reason there that uh, you know that they're saying that. I'd, I'd sure I'd sure ask them about that. Okay. It was just curious. It was like, oh, is this, you know, obviously standing waves or what it is in 50 feet isn't a multiple of anything. It's like, really? I've I had situations question. where I, uh, especially on six meters, uh, so, uh, your multiple lengths, you got to get the right multiple length or you can have issues uh, getting it to load right. And uh, it could be something like that with their, uh, because they've got their, uh, uh, tuning apparatus right at the base of the uh, loop, and uh, there's there's some reason uh, other than length or you know loss. I, I think that uh, uh, that they're saying that. Okay. Well, when I find out, I'll let you guys know. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all. We have just a few more minutes here. Um, if anybody has anything very quick, um, otherwise we just have just a few minutes before the uh, the meeting starts. Yeah, I'd sure. I'd, I recommend if you want to take a uh, environmental break, let's do it now, and we'll uh, start up right at seven o'clock. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah, five more minutes here. Topic is going to be uh, presented by Karen Rucker, KG Five GAK, three uh, D printing uh, antennas and dark arts. Same Google Hangout, so you don't have to go anywhere. And uh, we'll be starting here in just a few minutes. And Karen, I see you're with us. You want to do an audio check? Uh, sure. Can you hear me now? You are loud and clear. Hey, Doran, uh, yeah. this is Bill, KD, KD Zero, Whiskey Sierra Delta. Yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I sent you an email because of an article I'd read in last month's QST re regarding Mars, uh, their network. Uh, and I was wondering, um, and the question I asked in the email was, uh, they talk in the article about how uh, local ham radio clubs uh, work with the Mars network. And I was curious as to whether or not our club did anything like that or if other clubs in Colorado or the metro area actually work uh, closely with Mars. You know, I'm not too sure. To yeah, Fred, go ahead. Hey. Yeah, uh, I'm licensed uh, with Mars, Navy Mars. And uh, here a while back, uh, the Navy decided to get out of the Mars program, but the Army is still uh, carrying on. And during some of these events where they're doing the cross uh, band, uh, where they're outside and the Mars frequency and you're on the inside uh, operating split, uh, they have these... Uh, uh, occasional uh, uh, opportunities to be able to uh, uh, talk with uh, the Mars stations. So you don't have to be a club member as such to do that, just have to be a licensed ham and operate on the appropriate frequency split and uh, participate. But uh, other than that, unless you want to become an actual Mars, licensed Mars, I believe the Army is the only one that's uh, carried on the, the uh, tradition there if you want to look further into that. But we Navy boys uh, got kind of cut out of the program. Uh, okay. they, offer, they, they offered me uh, uh, the opportunity to join the, join the Army, and I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm a Navy boy. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand. Uh, no, I, uh, I have no ambition uh, 
as far as uh, getting active, I was just uh, curious. I was exposed to the Mars network uh, when I was in Korea with the Army back in 65, 66. And I had heard, we, I was with a unit that was isolated in a corner of the post away from the, the main operations of the base. Um, and I, heard, I had heard that there was a Mars station over there and that guys could go and maybe get a message home or maybe even uh, if you were lucky and you, and you showed up at the right time, uh, be, in, be able to talk uh, you know, with your family back in the States. But I never took advantage of that. Um, and uh, but I was just curious after reading that article as to, you know, to what degree our club or other clubs might be involved. But uh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm not looking to get yeah. involved myself. But yeah, I, thank I, you. I, yeah, I haven't heard of anything there as far as any of the amateur uh, clubs uh, participating in any of that. Uh, Mars has always been kind of uh, off uh, uh, to itself because of the nature of the frequency uh, spectrum uh, available and uh, how I don't know where you are at from us uh, 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 let's um, I was operating Mars out of uh, the, the Marianas uh, NAS uh, uh, Naval Air Station uh, and it was a great great facility and a great opportunity to help the GIs talk back with uh, their folks uh, and family members back uh, uh, home. But Osan, yeah, Osan, yeah, Osan, Korea. I spent some time in Osan. Anyhow, that's about enough of me. I just got to okay. make a quick, quick comment that the Air Force has uh, bars as well. Okay, and we're at the top of the hour. Uh, Jerry, do you want to take it away? Yeah, we'll take it. Uh, <clears throat> welcome, everybody. Looks like we've got 